About a year ago, Wooba, the maker of Factorio, announced they were making an expansion. It's called Space Age, and it comes out in a couple of days. Or maybe you're watching this and it's already out. Or maybe this is the distant future, and you're some kind of archaeologist. In which case, I would like to let you know that I was very important and widely regarded as both intelligent and incredibly good looking. The purpose of this video is to help people who, like me, played a whole bunch of Factorio, meaning we've become very familiar with the way things are in Factorio. The layout of UIs, what we can and can't do, and as it turns out, that familiarity might work against us. There are a lot of quality of life changes and fundamental gameplay changes that Whoopa put into the game over the past year and a half. Some of these changes are so fundamental that when you play with them, you'll kind of wonder how you ever got along without them. Some will fundamentally alter the way you play the game. Some are fairly technical and would benefit from some kind of an explanation. A technical explanation needed in my factory game? Nani? That being said, this is a spoiler-free video, although I will be mentioning the fact that you can go to space because the name of the thing is Space Age, and if that spoiled it for you, then I don't know what to tell you. Maybe lighten up a little bit. Just, just a touch. Skosh. Little. This much. This video is broken up into chapters, so click on the timestamps if you need to use them. But with that said, let's get into it. Our first stop are the circuit networks. They have gotten a lot of love. To start off, a note about very small but potential spoilery things. If you're like me, one of the first things you do when you start a game is you click on your quick bar and you start setting all the things you're used to. However, this list might show you a whole bunch of items that you might not want to see just yet, and if that's the case, simply go into the game settings, interface, and make sure show all items in selection lists is unchecked. This will make sure that only the items you have unlocked will show up. Just be fair warned, anytime you need to set a circuit signal, which is the reason this detail is in the circuit list, those signals are not impacted by this and it will show you everything. So just be aware. If you're wondering why there's no red and green wire items anymore, that's because they are now for free and available all the time via key bindings, Alt-G, Alt-R, and Alt-C for red, green, and copper respectively. One really cool change is that now you can use a combinator to set the recipe for assembling machines. To do so, simply wire them up like so, select the combinator, give it a recipe, open up the assembling machine, and tick Set Recipe. As you can see, we now have the transport belt set here. If I change this, the assembler changes too. You can do this with more than one assembler, and this one recipe will set all of them. Do note, however, you're not going to get more than one out of here. If I have two recipes here, it'll still only use the first one to set the recipes. As you can see, both of them are the power pole. You can, however, set recipes on different types of assembling machines. So if I select a recipe the chemical plant can make, and then I tick set recipe for it, you'll notice it gets the recipe too. Pretty cool. The combinator interface has gotten a total rework. Let's start with the decider combinator. Let's give it a couple of signals. And let's see what it does. If I go into here, you can see I've got the input signals listed along the bottom. This is for convenience, so you don't have to constantly be looking over at a window here and hook it up to a power pole, all that stuff. This green background here means they're coming in on the green signal, as usual. This checkbox here also means we're getting signals on the green wire. But these are essentially the conditions. The big takeaway here is that the decider combinator can now capture a number of different comparisons and combine them with either AND or OR logic. Let's take a look at the UI elements and see how we get there. It's going to look at either the red or the green wire, depending on what you hook up. You can then tell it what to look for. So let's say barrels. We can also change what the comparison symbol is here, and then we can set it to either compare against a constant number like so, or against a signal coming in from a wire. So for example, I could say, check the inserters. And if I do set it to a particular item, it will ask which wire should I look at in order to make that comparison. Note now, you can have things in the red wire and green wire talk to each other. It's kind of cool. We can also add other conditions. You'll notice here that I'm saying the number of passive provider chests. If that equals the number of barrels, then be true. If it's true, it shows up as green. And if it's not, it shows up as gray. You'll also notice I have this little operator here. If I click on it, it swaps between AND and OR. I can add more conditions, and I can swap these between AND and OR. You should probably experiment with this and see what it does. And you can also reorder it by grabbing on this piece here and set it up how you like. Now for the output. By default, it's set to output count, but for right now, it's not actually giving anything. 
You can set this to reflect one of the inputs. So for example, I could set it to inserters and it'll put the inserter out on this wire here. These R and G values here indicate whether or not it's observing this input count from either the red or the green wire. As we don't have a red input hooked up, we can't actually select it and it's grayed out. You can also have it output more than one thing, but it is going to output this thing no matter what. There's no and or or going along with it. Also, if you set it to something that doesn't exist, it's not going to have any signal whatsoever. If you try to have it output an active provider chest input count, it's not going to have any input, and so it's zero, and so it doesn't show up. But we could, of course, say one. If you wanted this to be a value other than the input counts or one, you'd have to use an arithmetic combinator to do that, and it would have to be downstream of this. Speaking of the arithmetic combinator, it also got a facelift. As you can see, I've got the three input signals coming in here, and this is pretty much the same thing as the other one. That is to say, I have a red and green option here, where I can tell this to look at a particular value from one of those two things. I can set it to some mathematical operation. I've picked multiplication here, and now I have it multiplying by zero. I could of course have this be something else, like say multiply the number of purple chests with the number of red chests, which will of course give a zero. Let's set this to say an inserter. There, 50 times 20 is 1,000, and it wants to output a signal of 1,000, but it doesn't know 1,000 of what. So let's give it something. And now, whatever I put in the output field here, the number of that thing will be given by the value 20 times the value 50. Like the decider combinator, the output of the arithmetic combinator shows up on both the red and green wires. There's also a new combinator called the selector combinator. You can give signals to this, and it'll give you a bit of meta information about those signals. Let me explain. Let's hook it up. This one doesn't show you necessarily what's attached to it, but as usual, I can take the combinator and hook it up to a pole. And if I mouse over it, you can see on the right that I've got the three different signals there, which are the same as what we were dealing with a second ago. Anyways, let's see what it's actually outputting. I'm gonna put a pole here, and I'm actually going to disconnect it from the rest of the things, just so it's a little easier to look at. Let's hook it up to the output. And now if I mouse over the pole here, you can see the output signal is just the 50 chests. Now, why is that? Well, if I go here, you can see I've got three inputs, and it looks like the 50 chests is this one here. And if I bring up the GUI for the selector combinator, you can see its mode of operation is set to select input, and that the index is set to zero. What select input is going to do is it's going to output one signal, whichever one you select, based on the index you give it. So right now, the index zero is mapping to the chest. But wait a second, shouldn't it be this barrel? Well, that depends on if you have it set to sort descending or sort ascending. If I set it to ascending, I can mouse over the output pole, and as you can see, it's outputting the barrel of one. That matches up with this right here. The way it works then is that you can tell it which input to pick based on what order it's coming in, and you can figure out what index it is by sorting it and testing it appropriately. You've also got count inputs. This will just output the number of distinct input signals it has, so this should look like three. So if I give this a particular thing, let's say I picked uranium fuel cell, the output signal will be three of those uranium fuel cells. The next one's called random input, and this is literally just going to output a signal from the input every single tick, or whatever the update interval is. So if I set the update interval to zero, you can see it's changing every single tick. <laughs> I can, of course, make this a little easier to see and say once every 10 ticks, and every 10 ticks, I'll get a new signal. Bear in mind, there are 60 ticks in one second, and that is a fixed value that the game never changes. Lastly, there's one called stack size. So right now, I'm giving a signal of one barrel, 20 inserters, and 50 provider chests. If I mouse over here, you'll see it's saying 50 inserters, 50 chests, and 10 barrels. That's because those are the stack sizes of the items. Do note that if you're playing with Space Age installed, you'll see some options here that reflect that, like quality or rocket size, but we'll talk about those later. There's also another new combinator. It's called the display panel. Basically what it does is it shows an icon and maybe a message. If you click on it, you can set it all here and you can even edit these options about always show or show in chat, but there's a hidden feature. If you hook it up to a combinator and you click on it now, you can see you can actually have different things show based on different conditions. Those conditions are very simple. You essentially have one signal you can look at and you can do a single comparison against a number or another signal. You can also reorder these, but as you can see, we can change what this is by simply changing the value here. There you go. A fairly large change comes with the radar. Now you can hook radars up to the circuit network. And what's more is that all radars on a given surface are connected to the same network. There is only one circuit network for radars, but the trade-off is they're all connected to it. 
The easiest way to think about this is just imagine that all radars are connected via the circuit network. So if I come over to here and I set this to iron ore equals one, and I set this lamp to turn on if iron ore equals one, you'll notice it turns on, and yet these aren't connected. This will work across the entire map, but do note that any mod that uses other surfaces, well, each surface gets its own network. And of course, the red and green wires are separate as usual. One really cool feature is that you can now connect these circuit networks up to the entire belt that this is attached to. You've always been able to hook up single segments to things like lamps, but now I can set this lamp and then set itself to either enable or disable based on what's on the belt. Let's set it to red circuits, greater than or equal to 20. And now let's put a bunch of circuits in here. And you'll notice it's never going to turn on unless I go to here and I set this to read the belt contents and then set it to hold for all belts. Now you can see the rails go along the entire belt here. And certainly that's more than 20 red circuits. In fact, if I want to see how many it is, I simply hook this up to a pole and we see it's 82. Things to note, if you have a belt that side loads onto the one you're considering, they don't count. If I drop circuits on here, you'll notice it doesn't go up. The other thing that stops this from going forward are splitters. Obviously it's not considering these right here. Right now it's set to 82. If I collect all those, it's still 82. This will make sushi belts a lot easier. You can now hook up more things to the circuit network. Right here, we have a nuclear reactor. You can see it's showing a fuel of five. However, we can also say read fuel here. And now we can see there's a signal of six fuel cells. That is the five that were in the machine plus one that was being consumed at the moment, so six. This should make it a lot easier to control how much fuel you put into these. You can also read the temperature. We can also finally hook turrets up to these. Right now in the unit tooltip, it's showing that I've got 12 magazines in it, but it's not showing up in the circuit network. What I can do is I can click on this and say, read ammunition. Now you see I've got 12 magazines showing up on the circuit network. This means you can have an inserter limit the amount of magazines it's going to put in this. Very handy. Another fun detail is that you can actually set target priorities for these. So let's take a look at the spitters. If I wanted this particular one to target the big ones first, and then the smaller ones, and then the even smaller ones, and then the smallest ones, it'll now shoot these first and then these in that order. I can have it ignore unlisted targets so it never shoots anything that's not on this list. I could also, if I wish, have a set priority list here. If I click this, this will immediately go away because it's waiting for something to set this priority list, perhaps a constant combinator, like so. Now, if I select something here, I can select the big biter. This signal is now being sent to the gun turret and you can see it's setting it right here. Pretty cool. You can also make ignore unlisted targets something that gets set by the circuit network. All of this gives you much more granular control over how your turrets work. Another fun detail is now we have much more granular control over the colors these lamps have. What I can do is I can click on use colors and then go down here to color components. And now it'll take a red, green, and blue signal here and put those together into some sort of shade. If you mouse over this, it'll tell you exactly what it's looking for. That is, each one of those circuit signals should be between zero and 255. So let's go ahead and set that up. If I set this to say 100, and I set this to 200, and I set this to 50, here we go. And if I set the lamp to be always on, then you'll notice I get this weird shade here, which will of course change as I change this. There you go. I can also do a packed RGB. This is to simply give it a value between zero and whatever that is, 16,777,215, I guess. Anyways, you can give it a number on the white signal here and it will tint it accordingly. Also, there's now a very, very dark, scary looking thing here. That's Mm, it's gonna get me. So, big change to go over is that now if you click on a constant combinator, you'll notice that I've been clicking on these in order to set the circuit networks. You may have wondered what this is. Well, these are what are called logistics groups. Right now it's set to no group assigned, meaning it's not really saving this. If I click on a button here, R, G, and B, I can then give this an actual name, RGB. And now, anytime I want to use this, I can. So I could take this, make another copy of it, click on it, go here to change logistics group, select RGB, hit enter, and there you go. Now I can use these. I could make multiple of these. 
Let's see, I wanted to have one here that had bullets. All right, cool. Let's set this to bullets. There, now I can use this elsewhere. I can even stack these on each other. And now I have two things put together. Essentially, you can make groups, stack them as you like, and even turn them on or off temporarily as you like. You can, of course, reorder them like so. And if you want, you can delete them here or here. The nice thing is that because we're using logistics groups here, we can actually pair these up with things from the logistics network. For example, if I wanted to set the requests for a requester chest with this, I can. Just gonna put a robo port here so we're not having to look at the blinky the whole time. Anyways, if I click on the chest, I can say set requests for the circuit connection. And if I do, it'll set the circuit requests here. Indeed, let me put a power pole down. I'll connect this up here. And as you can see, I have a whole bunch of signals. What's really cool, if I click on the constant combinator, I can go into bullets, edit it, and I can give it a multiplier. If I set it to three, hit enter, then you'll notice it doesn't change here because it really shouldn't. The thing that's being multiplied by three here, if you hover the mouse over long enough for the tooltip to show up, it says multiplies the requests of this logistic group, which could be different combinator to combinator. That means, as you can see, we now have three magazines being requested. And if I look at the chest, well, there it is, three magazines. This also means that if we have a bunch of defensive areas set up, we can use this system to reflect upgrades. For example, let's say I have firearm magazine set up, but then I get armor piercing magazine set up. If I come into this logistics group and I change this, clicking here to here, now everywhere I use the bullets logistics group, they now see piercing rounds magazine, not just regular. There are more details with how this interacts with bots and things like that, but we'll cover that in a separate video. Another fine detail is if you click on these combinators, you can now see an add description button. Hello. And it'll put a description on the combinator for you. It's like comments and programming. Another detail is that the game is a lot better about maintaining these circuit connections. So if I cut and paste this, you'll notice I can paste it here and that circuit will remain. Also, undo is a lot more effective now. If I undo this now and undo again, not only will it show me a more detailed description of what's being undone on the little float up text here, but it'll also add the circuit connection back where it was. Other details about the undo have also been improved. What that means is that things like rotation, set recipes, and circuit connections all get maintained as you undo them. As a little side note, take a look at the cast shadows by the wires. They should look a lot better now. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Make sure to keep an eye out for the next videos in the series where I go over trains and logistics networks and all the other cool improvements they've added. If you're a long time follower of the channel, yes, I am still doing my Blender tutorial series, so don't worry, that hasn't gone anywhere. And if you wanna see me play some Factorio 2.0, come on over and check me out. Link is in the description. But until then, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next one.